I chose to do my second five-minute presentation over the Stanford Prison Experiment conducted by Philip Zimbardo in 1971. I briefly learned about this experiment my junior year of high school, but I wanted to do more research on it, so I chose to do it for this assignment. Zimbardo's research question was, how readily would people conform to the rules of guard and prisoner in a role-playing exercise that simulated prison life? The whole reason he conducted this experiment in the first place was because he was interested in finding out whether the brutality reported among guards in American prisons was due to the sadistic personalities of the guards or if it had more to do with the prison environment. His hypothesis was that inherent personality traits are primarily responsible for abusive behavior that takes place in prison environments. This means that he believes the brutality in prisons is most likely from the guards' sadistic personalities within the prison environment. The experiment was conducted in a mock prison that was created in the basement of Stanford University's psychology building. 75 people volunteered to participate in the study, but only 24 male college students were selected. They were paid $15 per day for participating. The men were randomly selected to either the role of the prisoner or the guard. Two men were reserved and one man dropped out of the experiment, leaving 10 prisoners and 11 guards for the study. The guards worked in sets of three and were replaced after an eight-hour shift while the prisoners were housed to three to a room. A solitary confinement cell was made for prisoners who misbehaved. Zimbardo wanted to make the experiment as real as possible. To do this, he had the prisoners arrested at their own homes without warning and sent to the local police station. They were even fingerprinted, photographed, and booked. Zimbardo then had them blindfolded and driven to the mock prison. He did this so that they would think the experiment was more real and that they wouldn't know that their prison was actually in the basement of a university. Once there, the prisoners were stripped naked and had all of their personal belongings locked away. Then they were given bedding and a prison uniform with their personal identification number on it. The uniforms had ID numbers, so um, they were used to de-individualize the prisoners. All of the guards wore, ki wore khakis, special sunglasses so that their eye contact with the prisoners was impossible, a whistle around their neck, and billy clubs that were borrowed from the police. The guards were instructed to do whatever they thought was necessary to maintain law and order in the prison and to command the respect of the prisoners. No physical violence was allowed. Zimbardo appointed himself as the prison superintendent, and the experiment was also intended to last for two weeks. The guards and prisoners settled into their roles within a very short time. The guards settled in more quickly and easily. Within just a few hours, some of the guards began to harass the prisoners. At 2.30 a.m., prisoners were awakened from their sleep by whistles for the first of many counts. These counts were used for guards to exercise control over the prisoners. Prisoners began to tell tales on each other to the guards. Some even sided with the guards against prisoners who did not obey the rules. Prisoners were taunted with insults and petty orders, and they were even often dehumanized. They were also given pointless and boring tasks to accomplish. Push-ups were the most common form of physical punishment for the prisoners. Guards would step on the prisoners' backs or have other prisoners sit on the back of fellow prisoners during the push-ups. The guards were completely surprised when a rebellion broke out on the morning of the second day. The prisoners ripped their identification number off of their uniforms and barricaded themselves inside the cells by putting their beds against the door. The guards sprayed the prisoners with extinguishers, broke into the cells, stripped the prisoners naked, and took their beds. The prisoners that were most involved in the rebellion were sent to solitary confinement while the three prisoners who were less involved were given their clothes and beds back along with other special treatment, such as getting to brush their teeth and take a shower. The guards became more assertive and aggressive after the rebellion. Since the prisoners depended on the guards for everything, they tried to find ways to please them. Less than 36 hours into the experiment, prisoner 8612 began to suffer from emotional disturbance. After many outbursts, the psychologist decided to let him leave. After breaking down when talking to a Catholic priest, the psychologist tried to get prisoner 819 to leave, but he wouldn't. Zimbardo had to step in and tell the prisoner that he was not in a real jail and it was a psychology experiment. Prisoner 819 immediately stopped crying as if nothing was wrong. The experiment was terminated after six days. Zimbardo realized much later that he thought as a prison superintendent, not as a research psychologist during the experiment.
So this shows that his hypothesis was correct and that it was the guards' personalities rather than the environment that they were in. Something that could have been improved in this experiment was the use of all male participants. Female guards and prisoners may have behaved in different ways compared to how the males behaved. Future research that could be conducted from this experiment is how to reduce abusive behavior in prisons. Researchers could study what the guards and prisoners did to cause conflict and apply alternatives in real prisons.